So I got a really cool manga that I want to share with you guys. It is called Bokuvanu by Miyoto Kito. I probably said that so wrong. But pretty much the um, translation means far is this is a mecha manga. So meaning it has to do with giant robots. <laughs> but but it's really dark and it goes into a lot of very hard backstory with the kids in this manga. It really subverts the genre on its head. Um, some backstory how I found this. I had this bad <laughs> habit back in the day where I'd go onto Wikipedia articles and read plot summaries, I know. And I read this one and it sounded cool, so I read the ending. <laughs> and I like the last chapter. And then years later, when I when I was getting me to read, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this manga. So I read I read it all the way up to the ending and I didn't finish it. <laughs> so I decided, like, hey, why don't I just finish this damn thing? And I did. And it's amazing and I really love it. Now, a huge spoiler about myself, I am a giant nerd. I love giant robots, I like collecting the figurines and stuff like that. Um, stuff like Gundam Wing on Toonami and Transformers Armada really influenced on me. So the the mecha anime genre, it, it's not something I've really watched a lot, but every time I see a giant robot on screen, I just, I just like, ooze and it's like oh my god i love this thing and i wound and everything um like i loved pacific rim i didn't see the second one because my friend said it was really bad but that and like you know kaiju with the giant monster godzilla i just love that stuff but the problem with mecha anime in a lot of times is that it, it's more of a toy commercial like i i tried watching transformers beast wars neo but this is the japanese sequel to beast wars that i also watched as a kid Beast Wars Neo sucked. <laughs> like, I was like, I am not the age demographic with this. This is for, like toddlers. So, that, that's the problem with the medica anime is that a lot of it is just for kids. And even when you go back to the stuff like Astro Boy and whatnot, it, it's a little qu too quaint and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's not as toy commercially. It's trying to tell a story, but the storytelling really maybe wasn't there. I haven't read Astro Boy, but stuff like Messenger, I assume that it's pretty close to Devil Man, which Devil Man was written at the same time as Messenger Z, and so um, I recommend watching the Netflix adaptation of Devil Man to be honest. But all that said, Boku Rano is a mecha anime meant for adults. So here's the plot, and there will be slight spoilers in this review, I am the off likes to delve out things in surprise, so I'm gonna say the basic plot stuff and we'll say the major spoilers to the end. So 15 kids are on summer vacation, they find a mysterious cave with a man in it, and he asks them if they want to be part of a game, and they agree to. And they appear in a giant robot, and each one of them gets a specialized chair to their memory, and they have to fight this other robot. And the mysterious man ends up winning the fight, and they get transported out, like, what, they're like, what the heck was that? And then, in the next fight, they win again. And the boy, who seems like a, the typical anime shonen protagonist, dies. The plot of this manga is that each kid, every time they pilot the robot, they have to use their life force to power it. And the major plot of this too is that the other robots they're fighting, not just other random robots, they are parallel universes of Earth. It's a weeding out program by some mysterious being that we never get an answer for because there's too many parallel Earths, there's too many divergent timelines and universes. So if they lose the battle, their whole universe is annihilated instantly. So this is not just a battle for themselves, this is a battle for the Earth, but they themselves would die regardless. So it becomes a situation where if you are going to die in this scenario, do you sacrifice your life in order to protect the Earth? The answer is like they kind of have to, but this there can be hesitancy on the battlefield as well, which we see with our pilots and we see with other pilots as well. Now, if you guys know Evangelion, which we won't get too much into, but Evangelion was such an important anime for the man and a subversive mecha anime as well. So many people copied it, like I'm watching Sarasso Fawn right now, which is just a huge knockoff of it. But this one is an Evangelion knockoff in a sense because it does follow the progression of fighting an angel like a new enemy each time. But it's so unique in itself and different that it, you can see the similarities, but it's more of a template than anything, and you don't, it doesn't feel so derivative and the plot where this really shines is not even so much the mecha battles there's some really cool ones um and it's it's less about like just straight up brawling and more it's tactical and intellectual i'll get to one of my favorite ones later but 
the biggest thing behind this is that if you're not totally sold on the mecha thing, like Ben, why are you talking about this? It's the character development. These kids just have such horrible backstories relating to rape, love triangle, absentee fathers, abuse. Um, one of the characters throughout abuses his sister constantly throughout the manga. And he's one of the central characters that we focus on. And his little sister, and she accepts that abuse because she loves her brother. And the reason for that becomes apparent later on. Now, there's some really great A stuff here. Like, I think it has my favorite love triangle I've ever seen where it's a, let me put it this way. It's a story where one of the pilots has a two childhood friends. One is a boy and one is a girl. And they're all friends until, you know, because they're at that age, puberty starts to kick up. And he kind of realizes he loves the girl. But his other friend gets sick and he can't leave the hospital. And, and he gets disappointed because it's like, hey, I thought this person loved me. She said she loves me. I know he loves him. But she's never going to be able to have him because he's always sick. And his original plan while he was in the mech was to kill him, was to destroy that hospital. So that way afterwards he can have her. But after learning that he dies after the battle, he has a change of heart. And also he was like serious, but not that serious. Like when the when push came to shove, he's like, I'm not going to kill my friend. He's like, hey, Dung Beetle, which is like this little anime mascot thing <laughs> that has a personality and can like warp space and everything. He's like, before I die, if I have a few minutes afterwards, transport me to this hospital so my friend can get the heart transplant and he can be with her because he does find out he's a perfect match. And he does do that. However, it turns out that the boy talking to the girl says like, I know you don't um, love me. I know you're only here for me because you feel guilty and you want to be with the other guy, the, the pilot. He's like, you should be with him. He's like, no, no, it's fine. So she's only staying there with him because he's sick and he doesn't want to, and she knows that he likes her, but she doesn't want to disappoint him while she likes the other guy while the other guy's thinking the reverse. So she never gets that love from the pilot because he dies. So she has to go with the boy from the hospital. And, you know, a little metal dramatic that it all happens in quick succession, but you get really solid grade A stories like that. Or dark stuff where, you know, it involves um, a girl getting abused by her teacher and have, and getting, getting blackmailed and getting gangbanged by her friends. It's just really delves into these crazy subjects. And man, I wish I can say like, this is not realistic that these kids are experiencing it. But having worked at the, a little bit at the school, just a tiny amount, kids experience some messed up stuff, man. Like they get adult issues pushed on them all the time. So if, you, if you're kind of thinking, how can there be this much tragedy with these kids? It's so much tragedy with kids in the real world too, unfortunately. Now, however, that's not to say that every kid's having an adult crisis. There's obvious stuff like kids wanting to be an idol singer, um, but her father's kind of distant. Kids just being from a strict background in general. So it does balance it out. And there is comedy. So it's not just drab and just traumatic experience after traumatic experience. Some of these kids' stories have are a bit more mellow too. And it, it's, it spaces them out. Some of the heavier stories are over here and some of the lighter ones are over here and it switches. So I think that just kind of gives it more of the realism than if every single one was so traumatic in itself too. Now, the fightings are cool. So there's some that at the beginning, it's just more like it takes the new characteristics of the kids. Like one kid likes to work and he picks up the, the mech and he picks up the rolling mech, like one of the concrete bags he has. So it does stuff like that. But eventually the, the Japanese military gets involved and they start and they start teaming up with the kids so now the military is fighting alongside the kids and while the military can't do anything to these massive 200 meter robots what they're able to do like with one robot who escapes is that they're able to track it on the other side of the earth and and use that to help assist the kid in the trajectory of the bullets coming towards them however at some times it works in reverse where the kids have to go to their home planet and fight the robots and those robots have the aid of the military so the, the, the other military we use smoke screen so rather than just being giant robot brawls it's more tactical there's a lot more tactics and and sometimes the fights even take backseat to the kids in the situation where you know why don't they just stay on the aircraft character the whole time and just fight in the ocean so they're not destroying the city but a lot of these kids they're selfish and they're even told like we can be selfish there's a quote at the beginning something to the effect of 
you know, we thought we were living our own lives, but we were always sheltered by our parents and everything. We were always in this state of control. Now, the adults have to cater to the kids. They have this power that nobody else can compete with, and it's the everybody has at the whim of the kids because you can't replace the pilot. So now the kids have every right to be selfish, and unfortunately, that selfishness causes death of, on a large scale. Sometimes, like with one story where he wants to be around this tower, it, it, it's a little ridiculous. I get there's a motivation behind it, but it feels a little um, it feels a little contrived. For every action, if there is a proper reason. Now, before I get to the main spoilers in the ending, which I really want to talk about, um, just a few nitpicks I have for this book. Um, with the 15 characters, sometimes the, the faces can just look a bit too similar to each other. It's kind of good they die off, because keeping track of all of them would be rough. Even though they all have great individual backstories, identifying them by face is difficult, and by name, I, I jab all these 15 Japanese names. It's, it's I don't have any chance for it. Um, sometimes the kids just maybe this is the translation I read, which was a fan translation, but they can talk a bit too much like adults at times. And yeah, sometimes the reason for them fighting in a city just seems a bit too securitous. But despite all that, it, it it takes you out a little bit, but it's not it's not like a huge plot hole deal breaking within the novel. Okay. So now, spoilers, and I really want to talk about this. So, at the end of the novel, the kid who was the most abusive, who was the darkest one of all the group, and who just a great a asshole of the book, is the final pilot. And it's up to him to save the Earth. He's the, in charge of the last battle. And he has his character change, where he finds out who his mother, the military woman who was helping them, is his mother this whole time who abandoned him. The sister who allowed him to beat her, allowed it because her mother abandoned him and she didn't want to have him feel the same. And again, a little bit of the melodrama, but when he finds out this revelation, she dies. And then when she finds out about the uh, other daughter, when, when, I mean, this, and the sister dies as well because she's one of the pilots. So with that, he enters the final battle. And in the final battle, they go to another Earth. And he it's another version of Zer. Um, it's a white version, so it's really cool that both of them are there. But, <laughs> but um, he defeats it pretty soundly. It wasn't that, that, that bad of a deal. And they have a camera crew to film it just to show everybody like, hey, this is what's happening. This is what we're going through. And then the another dung beetle from the other pilots comes in and has an afro. It's funny. And he's like, oh, okay, that's what we thought. And dung beetle's like, don't do it. It's a trap. He grabs the, um, the capsule, which they're forced to kill in order to win. And he opens it. And the pilots within that capsule teleport out. So they can't identify where these pilots are on Earth. He can sense the souls of people all across the Earth and everything and identify each individual, but he can't identify them to... He can only see them. He can't identify them as an individual level. So, and Don Beetle's pissed like, man, if they didn't open that compact, they wouldn't have escaped. We only have 48 hours to, to find them. And it's like, you know what you gotta do. So throughout the manga, Zareth has these special laser beams that can just shoot out a whole bunch. It's really cool. So, the only way for him to win it so his universe doesn't get destroyed is to kill every single person on that earth with laser beams. And they even calculate out the time. It doesn't take like, an, it's not instantaneous. It takes like, I think a bit over a day. So he's just destroying everything. And he stops and throws up because it's too difficult. But then Beatles right. He's like, man, you gotta keep going. If you stop, it's just gonna take longer. So he's just killing each one. He's seeing all every single soul just like disappear. And you know, just hoping that he can hit them before he has to kill everybody on the earth. Because he just has to kill those three. And the perspective changes there. You start to see the news broadcast of the of the earth. You start to see the buildings getting destroyed, the, the screams of the people dying, and the terror that they're seeing from this giant massive robot decimating their planet. It just forces you into perspective, like, what if that happened to us? What if we were forced with a genocide that we couldn't comprehend or couldn't stop in any way and we just had to wait? There's something slowly devouring our Earth, just decimating us, just erasing us from existence. And in some ways, it doesn't matter or not. It's just the more gruesome men because while our Earth would end instantaneously, even though we don't know it, now it's a prolonged slow death. And just because of a little mistake that we're not even aware of. And that's what the people of this Earth 
our experience. That's the ending that I read that that made me want to check out the last panel, and you know, just kind of kept bringing me back um, to the manga that catastrophe and the kid, unfortunately, having to go through that. So while he was the biggest asshole throughout the book, and he, he changed and he became a better person and started learning the meaning of life and death and the gravity behind it, now has to commit, commit this atrocious act with his new moral system till you know he does win and he saves his earth but he had to stay with that guilt and continues to stay with that guilt as he becomes the next dung beetle to lead the next group so that is boku rano um i didn't talk about everything um it is a great manga the art is amazing i want to read more by this author i really loved it it's not too long it's only 65 chapters as well but there's a lot of dialogue in it for manga so I really recommend checking it out. If you like the art panels I showed you, it, it's definitely worth the barrier to entry. So, Bokurano, check it out.